provide work. We think this, uh, this ratio needs to be changed and that work is, uh, the more, that is more incentivized than, than uh, sheltered workshops. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce Representative Tony Coelho. The Honorable Tony Coelho has spent his entire adult life helping advance the lives of people with disabilities. Diagnosed with epilepsy when he was 22 years old, Representative Coelho work, Representative Coelho's work is marked by significant milestones. Among them, he is the primary author and sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act. He is a former six-term United States Congressman from California who specialized in disability rights. He has kept this up even after he left Congress by working with then-President Bill Clinton to establish the Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy, and he founded the United States Business Leadership Network, which partners with such corporations as 3M, Apple, Bank of America, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cox Enterprises, United, United Postal Services, Walgreens, and Walmart, amongst many, many others, uh, to increase the employment of people with disabilities. It is my honor to, re to introduce uh, Representative Tony Quillen. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it very much. It's an honor to be here today. I picked up this little brochure, and I want to tell you that I go all over the country. Uh, this is excellent. And so if you haven't seen it, pick it up. Uh, I love the, the, the first thing you see is unlock. And that's what employment's all about. I take the view that uh, if you give me the right to fail, then I have the opportunity to succeed. And what happens in our country today is so many people ask the question, can you do this if you have a disability? And I'm saying, how do you know unless you give us the opportunity to fail? You give everybody else the opportunity to fail, why not give us the opportunity to fail? And so uh, it's, in, it's basically turning around and psychology that exists in this country. You know, I always go back, and most of you are too young, but Jerry Lewis had these telethons. And he was a comedian. And what he'd do is raise money off the back of those of us with disabilities. He'd have somebody come up to the microphone, uh, not to the microphone, just come up to the podium, and he'd pat him on the head and say, I'm sorry he is, but your disability. Then he'd send you back into the corner and he would do everything. I'm saying, I don't go in the corner. I want to be part of it. And those of you, as Eric said, I have epilepsy. I've had epilepsy and had seizures for 50 years. I'm 75, that gives you an idea. So I've had seizures. I just had one last week. I still have them. And so every morning when I get up, I don't know if I'm going to have a seizure or where it might be. And so I have an opportunity, I've had the opportunity to work, even though I was discriminated against to begin with. I was discriminated against by my parents who thought I was possessed by the devil. And that's a cultural thing with a lot of different groups. And, you know, I always say that my Republican friends know I'm possessed, but to have your family think you're possessed is a little bit different. I was, couldn't get a job, and I, I was kicked out of the uh, seminary. I wanted to be a priest, all because of my efforts. And that goes on and on across the board. And as Eric said, there's a high percentage, 75% of those of us with disability who don't have a job. And let me tell you why a job is so important. A job is so important because then you have the opportunity to provide for yourself, to provide for loved ones. You have an opportunity to get a home. You have an opportunity potentially to buy a car. You have an opportunity to participate in society just like everybody else. Without the job, you don't. Without the job, you're dependent upon government services and so forth. With the job, you can eliminate that. I've said to the last five presidents of the United States, that I don't know of any group other than ours who wants to pay taxes. Everybody doesn't want to pay taxes. But we are willing to pay taxes, that means we have a job. And so I have said to everyone, and some of them have repeated it, but it is true. We want the ability to participate in society like everybody else. We want the opportunity to fail just like everybody else. And if you want to see if we can do the job, give us a job. And if we can't do it, 
virus. There's nothing that says they can't if we don't do the job. And so when people say that they're afraid to give us a job because they can't get rid of us, I say, you're wrong. If we can't do it, you have the right to dismiss us. But you've got to give me the opportunity to fail, like you do with everybody else in society. Give us that same opportunity. So I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you're pursuing people in the state assembly and state, I don't know if you call it assembly here in California, you do. but the lower house and the upper house and, and parliament, or British, uh, and Congress and the legislature, to get them to understand that Georgia is way behind. Georgia's way behind the rest of the states in providing opportunities for employment. And it's so important that they recognize that we as a community want this assistance. Now let me just say one other thing before I get off. And that is, we'll never get this. We'll never get the opportunity to fail if you don't press people to give us that. And it's not me. I'm going to be speaking to the Senate in a bit. But it isn't me, it's you. And we as a community have to get uh, aggressively involved politically so that people know that we have votes, that people know that we have influence. And if you aren't willing to be involved, then don't complain about government not taking care or insisting that you get an opportunity to work. So it is, the, if you take the fact that 10% of our population are people with disabilities, and then you take our loved ones and you take those who care for us. That's about 20%. And that is an amazing part of the population. There's no other group larger than us except for women. And so everybody else gets a, an opportunity to participate except for us. Why not? And we don't participate because we're not engaged, we're not involved. And so one of my efforts besides advocating for disabilities is to make sure that those of us with disabilities get engaged, be involved. And when you go across the street, that's the key. When you go across the street and you tell those legislators that you want the opportunity to fail, that's what counts. So I think it's great what you're doing. I appreciate what Eric has done to get you involved and so forth. Keep it up, go for it, fight, make a difference. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Representative Coelho. Um, I'd like to, to just take a break in the, uh, in the uh, um, program for just a second to introduce Representative Valencia Stovall, who's with us this morning, and I'd like to have her come up and say a couple of words as well. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm really excited to see you all here this morning. I think it's very important that you are, are coming out to advocate for employment first here in Georgia. And I think that we're missing a big jewel when it comes to employment when we're leaving out our individuals with developmental disabilities. I have a son who's, uh, who's intellectual developmental, um, has intellectual developmental disability. He's 25. And he's still suffering with problems with getting gainful employment. They want to give him something that's mediocre and don't, don't believe that he has the ability to be able to really work um, in a high paying job. And so I am one of your advocates here at the state capitol, whatever I can do to help push it. I served on with um, Chairwoman Dempsey on the House Study Committee we did on post-secondary options. Uh, for individuals with um, developmental disabilities. So welcome to the Capitol and look forward to seeing you all over across the street. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I just want to comment on something that Representative Coelho said and that is that uh, um, women are a larger group than uh, people with disabilities. And I want to remind everybody that the thing about disability is it doesn't care what gender you are. It doesn't care what color you are. It doesn't care what you believe uh, in terms of religion, it affects everybody. So really, um, while it's 20% officially, I think that if you think about people that know people with disabilities, that care about people with disabilities, we're probably a much larger segment of the population than anybody knows. Uh, and if we hold ourselves together, just think about how powerful 
we might be. So I want to encourage everybody, when you go home from today, to reach out to five people and tell your story to five people and ask them to call their legislator and say, I know so and so, and I'd like you to support people with disabilities to go to work. If we got five people from each of us in this room who called their legislator, we could shut down the phone system at the Capitol and they'd have to do something around employment for people with disabilities. So, I now, uh, my great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, someone who many of you might have seen at the Evolution Conference. Uh, he was the star. He bowled us over. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce Josh Wells. Um, and uh, Josh, if you'll come up, and uh, he's going to talk about his own story about going to work. Josh? Good morning, my name is Joshua Wells from Newton, Georgia. I'm very proud that, um, I'm very proud, um, I'm very proud to introduce that in October I will celebrate the 12th anniversary of me being hired to work at Rick Robin, a gourmet burger restaurant. I used to go to a sheltered workplace it was nice, but I never got to be a part of my community. I never felt like I was doing anything useful. I was, I was isolated. I think it is so important for people with disabilities to be involved in the community rather than sit at home and shrivel up. I met some wonderful people at my job while also becoming a part of my, my town. I also volunteered at a local horse farm and loved the people I have met but I love horses more than people. <laughs> I, I have a great job coach, Ms. Lewis Smith of Briggs and Associates, who checks on my jobs, makes sure I attend social events like the Americans with Disabilities Day at the state capitol. Last year I had the honor to speak before a legislative committee about supportive employment. Ms. Lewis has worked hard to help me become an active part of my community. I have made lifelong friends with her clients, and I'm going to be a groomsman at the wedding at one of them later this year. I am a real part of my community. I know the mayors and city councilmen, county commissioners, and the sheriff as my friends. I've even met Miss Georgia. She was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see where I am. Oh, yeah. I also volunteer at the Nixon Center for Performing and Visual Arts in Newton and have become a patron and serve as a greeter at my church every Sunday morning. I want to lead a full and happy life. I should be an important part of my community and not separate just because I have disabilities. Everyone has some sort of disability. So what? I want to lead a full and happy life. Um, I, I thank God for people like you who work hard to give me the opportunity to be someone, to be a citizen, someone who matters. I want to make a difference. I know I, it must be frustrating for you at times, but don't give up. I need you. Um, do you have any questions for me? I have no idea what kind of shoes the frogs wear. Open toes. <laughs> I will not remember that. Don't talk about your joke. I'll tell you a joke. That's right. You told me a joke. Cool. Thank you, Josh. Oh, you're welcome. Our next speaker is Kurt Vogel. And I met Kurt uh, when he entered the Excel program at Georgia Tech University. For those of you that don't know, the Georgia Council on Development Disabilities and Disabilities, as well as Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency and others have been supporting the expansion of the inclusion or post-secondary inclusive programs. And uh, Josh is one of the students at uh, Georgia Tech 
in the Excel program, and I'd like to invite him to come up now and uh, tell you about his story.